Hey there, it's Lord of the Smart Rings here. A little over a month ago, I got the chance to test the Ultra Human Home, a smart device designed to monitor your indoor environment. We're talking air quality, light, noise and more. What makes it especially interesting is how it works with synergy with the Ultra Human Ring Air. I already covered uh, the unboxing and first impressions in a separate video. In this one, we're going deeper into the hardware, the software and how the Ultra Human Hope integrates with the Ultra Human app. I'll share the specific insights, I've discovered some real world use cases, a look at what's coming next uh, for this device and my current verdict based on everything I've experienced. So let's dive in. One click disclaimer before we dive in. The Ultra Human team sent me this device for testing, but this review is 100% mine. No censorship, no script, no obligation. Let's talk hardware. The device itself looks like a sleek mini Wi-Fi router or better yet a shrunken Mac mini. It's got an aluminum body with uh, a nice finish, clean, uh, clean lines and rounded edges. It measures 12 by 12 by 4.7 centimeters and weighs 540 grams. What really matters through are the sensors inside. You've got air quality sensors, VOC, CO, uh, CO2 to detect if you are blessing a chemical cocktail. I'll come back to CO2 in a moment. There are also particulate sensors PM1.0, PM2.5, PM10 checking fine dust, pollen and smoke in the air. For context, PM2.5 particles are over 30 times smaller than a human hair. They are produced by things like combustion and can lodge deep in the lungs, potentially contributing to cardiovascular disease. Temperature and humidity sensors help track if, if your room is too hot or too dry, which can impact your sleep, your breathing and overall air quality. Light sensors, including the blue light spectrum and the UV, analyze not just how much light is present but also its character. There are also a microphone that monitors ambient noise, helpful for identifying sleep disruption like snoring, traffic or barking dog. The Ultra Human Home fits nicely on a dresser or nine stand I've been using in the bedroom. It's powered by USB-C, so not battery operated and draws less than 2 watts of power, roughly one third of what a typical Wi-Fi router user uses. On the front there is power button and LED plus two switches uh, that let you disable the microphone and wireless module, basically an airplane mode. The device is ESD and EMF safe, meaning one you won't get a shock when you touch it and two, it emits very low levels of electromagnetic radiation. If you're curious about EMF exposure, I actually tested it myself. I measured the RF, which stands for radio frequency, this is the high frequency electromagnetic field generated by wireless communication, things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or mobile networks. I also checked electric fields, which are mainly created by power lines, adapters and cables of course. And I tested magnetic field, which usually come from transformers, uh, power suppliers, supplies and large appliance. Using my device, uh, GEM uh, F39 device I think, I took real measurements of the Ultra Human Home under normal use. The results showed very low wireless radiation and safe magnetic field levels. Now there's one elevated reading in the uh, electric field, but it's typically for any device plugged into mains power. 
I ran this test because I'm currently diving deep into the topic of electromagnetic smoke and since I kept this device near my brain and head in the bedroom I wanted to be extra cautious. Now validating the sensitivity and accuracy of these sensors against a reference device is pretty tricky but I did my best to uh, practical use cases I'll touch on shortly. According to the specs, uh, the device should last about a decade on paper. Whether that holds true in real life, we'll see. Let's move on the software, the Ultra Human app. The home device has its own dedicated tab in the app located in the bottom, uh, in the center of the menu. You will get to see it right in the middle. Ultrahuman continues its uh, signature scoring systems here uh, just like it does for sleep, movement, uh, CGM data using a scale from 0 to 100 where 100 is of course the optimal. The app assigns an overall environment score based on where the app is uh, placed. For my example it was bedroom. Just below that you will find detailed metrics including CO2, particle matter levels, temperature and noise. You can see the charts here. You can swipe between the, the days and explore the trends. The lower section of the home tab organized uh, the data into, into key categories as is air quality and you can see the status healthy. There is environmental comfort, light exposure and UV exposure, all of them with the score and the uh, description. Each of these has submetrics with label like safe, optimal, good, uh, based on the most recent synced uh, data. You can of course tap on any metrics to view, to view the timeline and scroll uh, also the previous uh, days. There is always some short explanation and uh, reference range. This structure is consistent across all metrics. There is also a basic setting menu. It shows whether the device is connected and when uh, it was last synced. Uh, connection wise uh, it works like uh, this initially you pair it via bluetooth to set up the wi-fi but after that all data flows exclusively over wi-fi not bluetooth as i initially thought now let's talk about some of my personal insights and hands-on experience enough theory let's get practical first up co2 optimization i've taught my wife a lot of things in the bedroom and one of them is to keep the window open all night for ventilation. But with the arrival of our newborn and the drop in morning temperatures, the window started staying shut. That quickly led to a spike in CO2. In other words, the room was filling up with exhaled air overnight. This whole use case aligned with scientific background and I actually documented it a uh, post on Instagram. So besides tweaking our home's uh, ventilation system, I know any of CO2 sensors could help with this. Uh, I received this notification and that alert mark a first sign of, let's say, correlation between data from the ring tracking deep sleep and uh, environmental data from home showing high CO2 levels. That's the kind of crossover between variable and environmental data I find pretty cool. Next one, uh, the LED light, the LED light. One unpleasant surprise during setup was the constant green LED on the device. I'm pretty sensitive to these things and constant artificial, artificial light like that goes so completely against the principle of healthy circadian rhythm. I've reported this annoying LED on device uh, before for the dream device from the friend's headband and others, but Ultrahuman was the first brand who actually responded positively. More importantly, they fixed it. So thumbs up. 
Next uh, use case. My wife also experimenting with the ultra human ring and I was curious whether she could also receive notifications from ultra human home. Since she is currently on maternity leave and often shares the bedroom with our newborn, the environmental insights from home are actually even more useful for her, especially in terms of monitoring the space where the baby sleeps. Good news, her app pair with the ultra human home just like mine. So yes, sharing the device across multiple phones or accounts is totally easy and okay. Let's talk noise. Most of the notifications I received were related to sound levels. I live close to an airport and have small kids at home, so really appreciate the ability to set up custom noise threshold. At first I thought I could fix this by turning off the microphone using the hardware switch, but it seems like Ultrahuman is still collecting the data, so I report it as a feedback because it's still still collecting the data even I have the switch off. So let's see what happens in the next uh, updates of the firmwares. Next one is cooking. Is it, is it surprising? The ultra human home is placed upstairs in our bedroom and even from there it very reliably detects when we are cooking downstairs, especially when we are frying something. This shows up clearly in the readings for PM2.5 particles. It even triggered a notification. So yeah, when we are making lunch or dinner, Ultra Human knows. By the way, the Ultra Human ring is having an anniversary. So I'm planning a fresh review and Ultra Human is offering 15% discount to go with it. That review drops on June 16th. So if you are subscribed, you won't miss it. And if, if uh, you've got any question about the ring hit me up on social media or drop comment right in, here in on youtube so what's still missing honestly the one major thing that was promised during the launch campaign ultra sync ultra sync is the background tech designed to find correlation and visualize data between the air ring and the home device it was featured in the Ultra Humans promo materials uh, as a big selling point like this. According to last updates, it's still in development, expected to launch around late June or early June 2025, of course. When it's out, I'll probably release a follow-up to this video or at least article. Now. I do appreciate that Alta Human is building its own ecosystem, but right now I also miss broader integration like with Apple Home, Google Home and similar platforms. Another thing I love to see is a high level view of the data. Right now you can only track environmental quality day by day, but being able to zoom out and get weekly or monthly insights would be super valuable. So, what's the final verdict? Ultra Human Home is more than a just sleek little box full of sensors. It's ambitious attempt to extend variable tech into your living space. And if you are already using the Ultra Human Ring, this makes a lot of sense. Smart home monitoring within the Ultra Human ecosystem goes for $549. In my review, I took one of star mainly because UltraSync still isn't live and integration with other system is missing. Just to clarify, if you use my referral link, uh, you won't get any discount right now, but you will help support my website and this channel. So thank you. Where did home score points? Comprehensive environmental tracking, also the ability to share it across multiple phones and uh, accounts, potential to set up several units uh, across uh, diff different rooms in your building or home, and a real attempt to real attempt at syncing variables with your environmental data. That was the example of it, deep sleep and CO2. I also appreciate that Ultra Human responded quickly 
to feedback like the LED issue. That's rare. Most companies just say we'll consider it for the future. But on the flip side, without integrations or working UltraSync, it's still just a smart but isolated multi sensor box. The potential is massive, but the key features are still missing or in progress. So if you want a device that shows you when it's stuffy, noisy, smelly or too bright at home, the home does that really well. But if you are expecting deep integration and jaw-dropping synergy between the air and home, you will need to wait a little longer. I've shared the first hint of what that could look like. Once Ultra Sync is out, I'm expecting early beta access. And when I'm, it's ready for testing, I'll be sharing a follow-up video or article on my website. That's it for now. Take care and peace. Cheers.